Jesus Vicente Zambada Niebla, also known as El Vicentillo, was born on March 24th, 1975. He is the son of Ismael Zambada Garcia, alias El Mayo, one of the top leaders of the Sinaloa drug trafficking organization and one of Mexico's most wanted drug lords. To continue learning the story of Vicente Zambada, then keep watching until the end of the video. Also, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to like and the subscribe button. Now without further ado, let's get started. Zambada is the oldest son of Ismael El Mayo Zambada Garcia. The elder Zambada has kept a lower profile than the infamous Sinaloa capo, El Chapo. But since the early 1990s, he has held steady control over vast swaths of smuggling territory. He is also the brother of medium Patricia Zambada, who is also in the Sinaloa cartel narco business. He's married to Cynthia Borboa Zasueta, his high school sweetheart as he stated in the book El Traidor by Annabel Hernandez. Zambada was convicted of being a drug lord when he was arrested in Mexico City on March 19, 2009 and extradited to the United States in February 2010 to stand trial on narco-trafficking related charges. On May 30th, 2019, he was sentenced to 15 years in prison, but due to his cooperation in testifying against several members of the Sinaloa cartel, his conviction term was reduced. Zambada was groomed into his father's empire from an early age and spent years coordinating drug shipments and acting as his father's surrogate. Like many so-called narco juniors, he grew up far removed from the dirt-poor childhood of his father, appearing more of a high-society playboy than a cold-blooded cartel boss. By the early 2000s, Zambada had become a top leader in the cartel and was responsible for coordinating drug shipments from South America, working out of an office to receive drugs from abroad and send them north to distributors in the United States. Zambada's career as an ascendant narco prince came screeching to a halt when Mexican police arrested him in the capital on March 17, 2009, just hours after he had met with DEA agents in a Mexico City hotel. Following his extradition to the United States in February of 2010, Zambada attempted to use this meeting as a grounds for dismissal, arguing that the agents he had met with that day had promised him immunity in exchange for continuing to provide information to U.S. authorities. The government acknowledged that its agents had met with Zambada, but argued that it had been nothing more than an abortive introduction. Their agents had not promised Zambada immunity, nor in any event would they have been authorized to do so. Judge Castillo eventually ruled that Zambada failed to prove that his meetings with DEA agents warranted a dismissal. Zambada was charged with trafficking more than $1 billion worth of cocaine, and in a 2013 plea bargain deal, which was made public by a U.S. District Court in 2014, Zambada admitted coordinating smuggling tons of cocaine and heroin with Joaquin Guzman Loera, and agreed to forfeit assets of $1.37 billion to the U.S. government. The plea bargain resulted in a fine of $4 million and 15 years in prison. He is considered a top potential witness against El Chapo. On November 8, 2018, a plea agreement was filed in the United States District Court for the District of Illinois, in which Zambada pleaded guilty to working with El Chapo and others to illegally import into the United States thousands of kilos of cocaine. Zambada and others used private planes, submarines, and speedboats to smuggle the drugs from Colombia to Mexico and then into the United States. Zambada appeared contrite in the Chicago federal court as he begged for forgiveness for the harm he did during his years as a high-ranking drug trafficker and pledged to lead a moral life upon his eventual release. I have proven my repentance with my deeds, not just with my words, said Zambada, dressed in a well-fitting gray suit and standing with his hands clasped behind his back. I think everyone deserves a second chance. This repentance did not come about just yesterday, nor did it come about just today because I'm in front of you and about to receive my sentence. In his statement to the judge, Zambada acknowledged the harm he had caused and apologized to his victims and his family alike. I believe every man or person lives based on good or bad decisions, and I have made bad decisions, which I truly regret, he said in Spanish through a translator, speaking in a soft, slightly high-pitched voice. Today, I feel like I can be a better father, a better husband, a better son, and most of all, a better human being. Citing Zambada's extensive cooperation with prosecutors, he's provided information against dozens of top drug traffickers, including testifying against Joaquin El Chapo Guzman Loera. Because of this, Judge Ruben Castillo delivered a sentence that was two years fewer than recommended by prosecutors. 
Castillo condemned Zambada Niebla's participation in the cartel and pointed to his admission under oath that he had relayed orders for several killings. The judge also said too many drug prosecutors focus on relatively low-level offenders. I've often complained that we need to go higher up, Castillo said. You are one of the highest people I have ever sentenced since I've been on the bench. But, Castillo pointed out that Zambada Niebla comes from a family long involved in Mexico's illegal drug trade. It's not like you went out and decided to join this organization. In effect, you were born into this organization that existed. Castillo also praised Zambada Niebla for assisting with U.S. efforts to prosecute top drug traffickers, including his father Ismael El Mayo Zambada Garcia. As Castillo praised Zambada Niebla for cooperating, he condemned some Chicago aldermen who recently criticized a colleague for wearing a wire as part of a federal investigation involving alderman Ed Burke. Once considered El Mayo's apparent heir, Vicente Zambada pleaded guilty to a slew of drug trafficking charges in November and has admitted to ordering murders and kidnappings of cartel figures who wronged his father or allies. As part of the plea agreement, Zambada agreed to forfeit more than $1 billion to make restitution for his nearly two decades of involvement in the drug trade. After about a year in custody, he began cooperating with U.S. authorities, and once the dam broke, he proved to be a nearly bottomless well of information about smuggling routes, narco allies, and other factors that helped the government seize drugs, catch capos, and build cases. Despite his ongoing cooperation with investigators, the decision to testify against Guzman did not come easy to Zambada, who feared the potential wrath of the drug traffickers he was turning against, according to defense attorney Frank Perez. He did not want to testify, but he was concerned about the consequences he would suffer, and not just him, but his friends and family. In return for Zambada's cooperation, the government recommended more lenient sentencing guidelines, and that measures should be taken to ensure his family's safety. These included having Zambada and his family be allowed to remain permanently in the United States. In light of that cooperation, prosecutors recommended just 17 years in prison for their star informant, arguing that his cooperation significantly mitigated the harm he had caused. When the defendant stopped, he stopped, prosecutors wrote in the 23-page memorandum. He appears to have done so for the right reasons, and he has done everything asked of him by the government, even when his cooperation came at a great personal cost. There's a need to incentivize other criminals out there who engage in serious drug trafficking who are thinking about engaging with the government, she said, adding that Zambada was one of the most cooperative individuals I've worked with. According to his testimony at the trial of El Chapo, Zambada was present for countless meetings of high-ranking cartel leaders and major movements in drug trafficking lore. He was there when El Chapo and El Mayo were reunited following Chapo's 2001 prison break and witnessed his father's pledge to split profits with Guzman. He was listening on the radio in 2004 when El Chapo's hitmen gunned down Rodolfo Carrillo Fuentes, a leader of the Juarez cartel. He was one of the last people to speak on the phone with Chapo's brother, Arturo Guzman Loera, before hitmen working for Juarez murdered Guzman in prison, and he was a party to a failed peace agreement between the warring factions during a bloody struggle between the Sinaloa and Juarez cartels. In a sentencing memo, however, prosecutors portrayed Zambada as a somewhat reluctant heir to the throne, describing repeated attempts to distance himself from his father's empire, but being drawn back into the world of drug trafficking. The 15-year sentence issued by Castillo includes credit for time served, including the 11 months Zambada spent in Mexican prisons before his extradition. So Zambada is likely to be reunited with his wife and children as a free man in as little as five years. He will then be subject to an additional five years of supervised release, the terms of which ban him from any association with people he knows to be involved in the drug trade, possession of firearms, or drinking alcohol to excess. Before sentencing Zambada, Judge Castillo took a moment to criticize the strategy of the war on drugs, arguing for a more humane solution to the issue of drug use. Castillo, a Clinton appointee who is the first Latino to serve as a chief judge in the Northern District of Illinois, also issued a sharp, thinly veiled rebuke of President Trump, who has often tweeted criticism of people who flip or turn on former co-conspirators and cooperate with authorities. In a brief press conference following the sentencing, Zambada's defense attorney Frank Perez said that the former drug lord was grateful for Castillo's relative leniency. Zambada Niebla, who pleaded guilty to drug trafficking charges in November, faced 10 years to life in a prison and a fine of up to $10 million according to his plea agreement. Prosecutors sought a 17-year prison sentence, 
The defense asked for 12 years. Castillo said he would not order a fine in light of Zambada Niebla's agreement to forfeit a staggering $1.37 billion in cartel proceeds. Upon his release, the government has agreed to protect him and to recommend that other federal entities allow him to remain in the United States. Don't forget to like this video and share. And so you don't miss out on new videos, subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications. Until next time.